It is now time for member statements. Member for Mishkikawak, James Bay. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The elderly people in the north of Ontario are in distress, Mr. Speaker. There is not enough space uh, in the long-term care houses, and this is causing a lot of stress for those residents. You heard the Minister for Health who talked about uh, more spaces, but uh, it's not the case for the north of the province. We have an aging population, more, much more than the rest of the province. Most of the regions are isolated isolated from urban centers. Communities such as Hearst, Mr. Mr. Speaker, have a four-year waiting list when uh, the average in the province is 140 days. In Kaposkasing, the waiting list is three years, Mr. Speaker, when the average is 140 days in the province. It's unaccept unacceptable. How could members of my community wait for the, that long? I believe that the minister should listen to us and she should restore an average that's closer to the provincial average and she should open more spaces, whether it be in Hearst or in Kappa's casing. Our community is in distress. We need additional spaces, Mr. Speaker. Three and four years waiting time is unacceptable when the average is 140 days. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements. The member for Barry Springwater or Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The transition into spring means the beginning of tapping season for maple syrup producers in Ontario. The iconic maple tree and the syrup it provides is found everywhere in our kitchen cupboards, backyards, and on the nation's flag. This cultural symbol and local economic driver is proudly produced and celebrated in my riding, as it is in many other ridings. On April 27th, I'll be attending the 54th annual Elmville Maple Syrup Festival in the township of Springwater. This historic community event gives local syrup producers an opportunity to sell their products and educate over 30,000 visitors on the history and practice of their craft. It's a great example of the kind of community support we find in small towns across Ontario. For 10 months, the volunteer committee works tirelessly to organize. Over 90 different community partners donate everything from money to flowers to prizes and parking spots. And each year, the committee holds a banquet after the festival, and they donate over $20,000 in proceeds to local schools, libraries, charities, and extracurricular programs in the community. Mr. Speaker, since 1966, the people of Springwater have volunteered their time, effort, talent, and money to help build their community from within. This year's festival is set to be the biggest yet, with a variety of acti activities, including the annual log sawing competition for dignitaries. I still need a partner, so if you're as good at cutting wood as you are at cutting red tape, please give me a call. I want to thank the volunteers and organizations that make this important community event possible every year. I wish you all a healthy and bountiful harvest season. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, recently, I had the privilege of meeting with Lisa Burchetto, Administrative Coordinator with the Niagara Region Sexual Assault Centre. She described the dire straits they find themselves in due to lack of proper sustainable funding. We are living in a time where more victims and survivors of rape, sexual violence and sexual abuse are choosing to speak out about their experiences. However, many cannot access the support they want and need, including free counselling services because there is an ever-growing waiting list. This agency is most certainly grateful for the funding that is provided from the Attorney General's office. The rest of their funding comes from generous local donations, grants and fundraising activities. Administration is bare bones, accounting for 11 per cent of its budget. They now have no idea what additional funds there will be for this year. We need to ask ourselves, why is it that in this period of heightened awareness and with a stated government commitment, we cannot ensure that help is available? We have a social responsibility to all victims and survivors to make sure they can access properly funded services. As noted by Ms. Burchetto during our meeting, with unprecedented growth in demand coupled with the lack of funding resources, this agency's very existence is threatened, and that will have dire consequences for victims and survivors. This government must provide the Niagara Regional Sexual Assault Centre with sustainable, multi-year funding so that it can continue to carry on with the work it's been doing across our region for over 40 years. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member from Mississauga Mall. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ms. Speaker, 
University Health Network Toronto is one of the top five organ transplant hospitals in the world. 85% of Ontarians are in favor of organ donation, yet 1,600 Ontarians are waiting for a life-saving organs. Every three days, someone in Ontario dies waiting for a transplant. Mr. Speaker, one organ donation can save eight lives and through tissue donation can enhance the life of 75 individuals. Hockey legend Don Cherry's son, Tim, was saved by an organ transplant. Under the leadership of Premier Mike Harris, in 1999, Don Cherry became the head of a new advisory board on organ donations. Mr. Speaker, by registering to become a donor, we have the power to save or change someone's life. In my writing of Mr. Saga Malton, there are 27 people waiting for the transplant. I like to acknowledge Amar Karma, an organ and tissue donation advocacy group from my writing, along with Trillium Gift of Life Network, who here have been working tirelessly to increase registration and awareness for this cause. Thank you so much for doing this. Every April, Ontarians celebrate Be a Donor Month, a time in which all Ontarians are encouraged to show their support. And Mr. Speaker, Mississauga is ranked fifth in registrations, but still there are over 500,000 health card donors which have not registered. I encourage everyone, please register yourself through www.beadonor.ca. I hope and I wish that we have plenty of donors so that no one, and I repeat, Mr. Speaker, no one has to die waiting for an organ transplant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. In early December, the Ministry of Health suddenly moved the Cambridge Ambulance Communication Centre to Hamilton due to staff shortages. The relocation was supposed to help. Instead, it made things worse. Hamilton Dispatch was not equipped with auto-locate technology for Waterloo Region, and an ambulance was set to the wrong location. Last month, when I asked the Minister of Health about this, she said she is working to modernize and strengthen the system. Since then, no progress has been made. In fact, the Minister has made things worse. Here is an update from the frontline Cambridge staff in Hamilton. The workplace is hectic and unhealthy. Staff are unable to take breaks and are being denied vacation time. Unsurprisingly, this has led to staff taking more stress leave. As of last week, Cambridge dispatch was short 20 staff. Managers told them by March 17, 12 new people would be hired. That date has come and has gone. No new staff have walked through the door. Provincial dispatch staff are asking for wage parity with OPP dispatchers so that they can actually retain staff, full-time hours for new staff rather than partial contract hours, and the same equipment that they need to do their job. Uh, the Minister of Health is fully aware of the severity of the crisis with Cambridge dispatch, and by not using the information at her disposal to address these issues, her ministry is knowingly putting people at risk. We believe frontline ambulance dispatchers deserve so much better than an unreal responsive ministry. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Member statements, the member for Ottawa, Vanier. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm happy to speak to talk about events in Ottawa, Vanier on Saturday. At 9 in the morning last Saturday, there was a competition for spelling. It was organized by Papa that wants to support the uh, success of uh, African-Canadian young people. This organization attracts people who want to compete uh, in the spelling. And I had to, the occasion to come back around 4 p.m. to listen to the last round of this francophone spelling bee, and the finalist went 12 rounds without any mistake. Vraiment impressionnant. Uh, it, That's very impressive. Uh, stint at Epelmoi Canada, I attended another incredible event, which was Let Your Voice Be Heard, that's organized by the Ottawa Inuit Child Care Inuit Youth. They took the stage and talked about their lives, their culture, their desire to unite to prevent suicide. Moving testimonies were offered, and we had great Inuit hip hop. And we also heard wonderful lullaby and and love songs in throat singing. We were fed traditional food. It was a wonderful day. And next Saturday, there is a, a sugar bush 
uh, au Musée au Parc de Vanier. It is the only functioning sugar bush in an urban environment. So I look forward to seeing you next week, Saturday, in Ottawa Vanier. It's always snowing. Thank you. <laughs> the member for King Vaughan. Nope. The member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is my honor today to highlight in this house the accomplishment of three young women from my riding of Mississauga East Cooksville who are here today. The three bright young students, Aditi, Liz, and Leticia from TL Kennedy Secondary School will be heading to Orlando, Florida to compete in the international DACA competition. DACA is an exciting business club that has over 180,000 members with chapters all over the world. DACA allows students to participate in conferences and compete in regional, provincial, and international competitions. This year, Aditi, Liz, and Leticia will be representing their school, our province, and our country internationally. I was proud to hear about the three students who showcased their exceptional leadership and communication skills during the regional and provincial competitions. They have now qualified to compete at the international level. Their hard work and dedication has paid off. The, the young girls are looking forward to representing not only Ontario, but Canada at the International Career Development Conference in Florida. Let us all together wish them the very best and congratulations to the three TL Kennedy DACA members, Aditi, Liz, and Leticia, as they head to Florida this month. Member statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Did you know, Speaker, that this Monday, April 1st, the Ford government changed the drug coverage for kids in Ontario? Without much fanfare, they decided that hundreds of thousands of kids would no longer qualify, and now their families are finding out. Today, a family from Blind River found out that their 10-month-old daughter, who needs special dairy-free formula, is no longer covered, and they will have to pay $700 a month to keep her alive. For the families with premature babies who need hypercaloric formula, it is $400 a month. And for the kids with special needs being fed via G-tube, it could be up to $1,600 a month. Speaker, the great majority of drug plans do not cover the special formula that feeds preemie, fragile infants, or kids with special need. The medication and nutrients they need were covered until March 31st, but it isn't anymore. Now, Families of premature babies, babies with special needs, are finding out the hard way that the government has cut them off with no warning, with no consultation. What does this government have against babies and children, Speaker? The minister seems to be making changes on the fly without thinking of the consequences, and these families are, going, are finding out that things are going from bad to worse. The NDP knows how to fix this, Speaker. It is called Pharmacare, a universal drug program for all Ontarians where you get the medicine you need, even if you're 10 months old and don't own a wallet. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements. The member for King Vaughan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in the township of King, there are disturbing reports of poisoning of dogs taking place in and around Memorial Park in King City. York Region Police have issued a statement asking for the support of the public in apprehending those involved in what is really a disturbing uh, allegation. Now, the township is taking action to communicate to residents, to post signs, uh, and to help ensure uh, family owners of dogs are safe. Now, the individual, two individuals have been apprehended. Uh, but we must remain vigilant. All of us have a role to play. The safety of our animals is important to us all, and dog owners in King and Vaughan know that I stand with you and support tough penalties for those that harm our pets. I know many of you love your dogs and are part, they're part of your family, and I have fond memories of a German Shepherd I owned for many years, I had for many years, that brought me great affection as a youngster. So I'm asking each person watching to be part of the solution, to remain vigilant, to please contact Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. Thank you, Speaker.
Member statements. The member for Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to my friend, the member for Oakville North Burlington, for tabling Bill 77, the Hellenic Heritage Month Bill. I want to thank her for this very important piece of legislation. I believe that recognizing the Hellenic community and their contribution to Ontario is very important and timely. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, since the arrival of the first Greek immigrants to Ontario during the early 20th century, the community has contributed immensely to social and cultural makeup of this great province. Greek cultural organizations, businesses, and religious institutions have historically played an important role in making Ontario what it is. On a personal note, I am the son of Armenians, a culture and society very much linked in culture and history of the Hellenic community. In fact, my maternal grandmother was Greek. I lived in Athens for two years, and as a young man, I was able to experience Greek hospitality, warmth, and friendship. I learned to speak the Greek language and was able to immerse myself in a culture and society that has left me with memories that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. On a final note, as we celebrated Greek Independence Day, we also had the, to recall the 100th anniversary of the hor horrific genocide that the Pontian Greeks experienced during the dying days of the Ottoman Empire. As the grandson of the survivor of the genocide, I want to mention that this bill will helpfully contribute to the healing of the people that are still living with that horrific memory today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. I think the member for Orléans has a point of order. Yes, Mr. Speaker, and I'm terribly sorry, but I have a guest who's here, and I just would like to recognize uh, today with us Mark Henschel, who's here for the introduction of a private member's bill that I will be tabling. So I would like us to welcome him in our legislature. Merci. Thank you very much. Reports by committees.